We are all aware that our Milky Way is filled with a magnetic field. We also know that observations of the rest of the universe seem to reveal that there is a magnetic structure that exists outside our galaxy. No one really understands where this comes from. When you examine how we detect these magnetic fields and examine Don Scott's Birkeland current concept, it becomes apparent that this method may well be showing us the filament structure of our galaxies. For this discussion, we must examine some of the properties of electromagnetic waves. Normally, when you look at a light source, the waves coming from this light source will come off at all random directions. When, for example, light reflects off glass, the reflected light becomes polarized. And this means that the light reflected will have a predominance for one orientation. And by using a polarizing lens, you are able to block these reflected rays of light, as this will only show light that passes through it with that specific orientation. When electromagnetic waves travel in the same direction as a magnetic field, it will cause the wave orientation to turn. The longer it travels through this, the more it turns. Equally, if the magnetic field was in the opposite direction, it would turn in the opposite direction. And this is called Faraday rotation. So by examining the polarization of electromagnetic waves, it is possible to make deductions about the magnetic field the light had passed through. Obviously, if a ray passed through a magnetic field in one direction, and then passed through another in the other direction, it would equate to no rotation at all. So there are limits to the conclusions we can draw from this information. So far, it has been used to study the magnetic fields of the Milky Way and beyond. This in turn is then used to draw the magnetic fields around the galaxies, and at first glance, when you examine the fine detail, they look a mess but this mess may well be hiding exactly what we are looking for. We will now examine Don Scott's model and understand how this could cause the same type of polarization to occur. It is important to realize that in Don's model, the magnetic field will slowly change as you move further and further from the center. For a more in-depth version of this, please see my video on understanding Don Scott's Birkeland current video. This means that the magnetic field will reverse several times depending on how many layers there are. So this means that if we look directly down a Birkeland current, we would see a very strong Faraday rotation along the central axis, but nowhere else. As soon as we move slightly off axis, we would see no Faraday rotation at all. Looking radially outwards from within a filament, we would also see no Faraday rotation as the reversing layers would cancel the rotation. Examining the filament from the outside, we can see that looking directly through the axis of the filament would yield no Faraday rotation as none of the magnetic fields are aligned with our line of sight. As we move further away from the axis, our line of sight will align with the first azimuthal shell. Now we have magnetic field lines that point directly at or away from our line of sight. So therefore we would start to see rotation from this point and it would slowly fall off until we meet the next azimuthal shell. But here the field would be traveling in the opposite direction. So the rotation is in the opposite direction. In the diagram, this is shown as blue for one direction and red for the other. As we move further out, this pattern repeats and we end up with a striped pattern. Looking diagonally across the filament would yield a similar result, but due to the components involved, it would not be aligned with the shells, and the strength would be considerably less than the side on view. This means that it will create what would appear as a very random pattern, but with what looks like a very regular interval. If we also consider a filament which does not follow a Bessel function, then we would expect this to have a magnetic field that wrapped around it, and in some versions would have a component that becomes more azimuthal to a point that it has in effect one shell, so there'd be one point at which the orbit would be around it on the outside. So here we would expect to see strong rotation at the top and then the opposite direction at the bottom, if we were looking side on, and very strong rotation in one direction end on. And again, if we consider that these might be twisting helical pairs, this would create a series of alternating Faraday rotations not quite as complex as the Bessel function. This means we should be able to use this knowledge to examine the Faraday rotation in a totally different way.
So let's start by examining a recent paper about hot gas that feeds the spiral arms of the Milky Way. They analyzed the Faraday rotation of radio waves and used this to study the magnetic field and determined that the ionized plasma condensed near our spiral arms and then flows into it. They examined the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way facing the galactic center. In the image you can see that the arm itself is a strong emitter of radio waves due to the hot stars and supernova remnants. They found strong shifts of polarization outside this zone. It originates from this condensing matter outside the arm. If we examine what a Birkeland current arm would look like, would this be something that we would expect? We would expect to see strong Faraday rotation on the outer edges, and this is because at the center you would expect more of the fields to cancel out. Towards the edges you would have fewer and fewer layers, so this will start to show up a strong Faraday rotation. So why are we seeing plasma becoming neutral towards the outer edges of the Birkeland current? If Marklin convection is taking place within the filament, this neutral matter will naturally diffuse outwards, so you would expect to see neutral matter collecting at the edge. So is this Faraday rotation just a one-off anomaly? No. When we examine the local interstellar clouds, we see these two show signs of partial and total reversals of the magnetic field. The image shows the polarization of stars. In red, we see stars which are about 40 parsecs away, blue those that are greater than 40 parsecs, and green shows star filaments. Now another paper shows how this polarization changes at different scales. The problem here is that it makes it look like a random mess. So how could we possibly use this to identify any structure? It is important to try and unpick some of this information. Firstly, it is important to realize that if our galaxy is comprised of many layered structures of Birkeland currents, then this would cause rotation at all scales. When you add these on top of each other, you will end up with what looks like a mess. But by examining the first paper we discussed and seeing that across a spiral arm, we see higher Faraday rotation at the edge than at the center, and then this coupled with the fact that the plasma is condensing at the edge, we have the fingerprint of a Birkeland current. Dissecting our local environment will require us to look at these markers in the data to spot potential edges. We can also examine the Faraday rotation for more distant objects to see if this pattern repeats. And in a study conducted on the magnetic fields in the Hydra A cluster, they used Faraday rotation to study the magnetized plasma surrounding the Hydra A cluster. And in this article, they point out that various studies have shown that there are a small number of radio sources that show extraordinarily high rotation. Hydra A is one of these sources. In the paper, they analyze the changes in rotation across the Hydra A cluster and find that it is both uniform and random. This is similar to what we see from the images of the polarization within our Milky Way. They discuss that the most likely explanation for the measured Faraday rotation in these types of sources cannot match the observations from Hydra A. They attempt to discuss various ways in which these magnetic fields could have been created, and these include primordial magnetic fields, extinct radio galaxies, magnetic field stripping, and so the list goes on. If we examine these results, we will start to see a pattern that hopefully some of you will recognize. Looking at the Faraday rotation distribution, we see that the sign reversals are common, and the distance between these are about 5 kiloparsecs. And these would be the width of the main Birkeland currents running along the arm. This part is what they refer to as random. It is important to realize that these Birkeland currents do not lie flat, but twist and turn, and this would create patterns of changing spaces at about the width of the Birkeland current. 5 kiloparsecs. At a larger scale, they see more order, and this would be about the scale of 100 kiloparsecs. And here we are seeing the effect of the totality of the field created by the galaxy. Using this knowledge, we should re examine the Faraday rotation data we have to try and identify structures out of what appears as chaos. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.